Welcome to Better Solidity Support and VS Code by Hardhat. Uh, we're going to be covering, this is going to be like a jaunt, quite an easy jaunt, through uh, the different Visual Studio Code extensions for Solidity. There will be shilling of the extension I work on. Um, but then, more interestingly, we'll move on to a couple of the technical blockers that are holding us back from giving you the Solidity experience you all deserve. And then, you know, a, a plan for getting around those blockers. So my name's John Kane. I'm from the Nomic Foundation. You probably know us as the Heart Hat people. Um, Nomic is a not-for-profit foundation, paid for by donations, uh, with a remit to improve the Ethereum developer experience. Heart Hat's a big part of that, but the remit's general. And we've identified a gap in editor tooling. And that's why we have built and released a VS Code extension called Solidity by the Nomic Foundation, uh, of which I'm the, the team lead. Uh, so you can find me on GitHub or hanging around our Discord server, particularly the Hard Hat VS Code channel. So if you want to come and chat or suggest some features, or you've got a really detailed bug report and a matching PR, come chat. Come chat. Editor tooling. Let's kick off by addressing the Microsoft-branded elephant in the room. Right? Why are we focused on VS Code? And the reason is, we have good reasons to believe that VS Code is the main way that Solidity is getting developed today. So if we take a look at the most recent uh, Solidity developer survey, you can see that VS Code is dominant, right? In fact, the 60 Visual Studio people, we suspect, actually meant Visual Studio Code rather than the venerable .NET IDE. Similarly, the Remix, uh, that's an online Solidity editor, but pulls in key components from VS Code. Right, so you're actually down at them before you're not talking about VS Code or VS Code adjacent. Right? And we suspect that the Solidity developer survey skews towards those who are deep in the ecosystem, right? those who are on crypto Twitter and, and click on the survey link when it goes out. Put another way, it's overrepresenting this long tail. It's overrepresenting the shadowy super coders who are doing their development in Vim and a team up session over a VPN to a military satellite that they repurpose for the day. Actually, let's just test, right? Hands up anyone who, when they do do solidity development, they do it in VS Code. And hands up if you're a shadowy super coder who's doing it in Vim. All right, see, that's a trick. No shadowy super coder would admit, right? And actually, hands up if anyone, any of the two Emacs users uh, are, are in the room, because I'll buy them a drink. Mm, I'm, I'm having my doubts. I've created the wrong incentives here. Right? And I'm not immediately going to renege on that promise. Right? Well, that'd be a lesson on uh, uh, soft promises and the value of escrow. Right. So by a Pareto analysis, VS Code is where we should put in the effort. I'm in VS Code. I want to do slide to development. I'm looking in the marketplace. What should I do? And I'd say that there are three options. If you have a different setup, get in touch. I want to, to, to hear it. But those would go down as Solidity by Juan Blanco, Solidity by the Nomic Foundation, and Truffle for VS Code. Right? And we're going to cycle through all three of them quickly. Um, and if we were doing it by installs, we would start with Solidity by Juan Blanco. But as I work on this one, and it's my talk, we'll start with mine. Um, as I'm a coward, I'm not going to do a live coding. Uh, so here is uh, earlier, John, to run you through the feature set. So if we jump into our Solidity contract, as you can see, we have table stakes, so syntax highlighting. We also have diagnostics, or otherwise known as inline warnings and errors. You can hover over variables or functions to get useful information. Uh, note that currently we're not showing documentation, uh, though I will come back to that. We have code completion on local variables or more uh, sophisticated examples where type information is required. Completions work inside of import statements as well, both at the file system level, but also direct imports. So in Hardhat's case, that's looking inside of uh, NPM modules. In terms of navigation, we can find usages. So 
Similarly, we can jump to definition. And this is working across the different packages of the monorepo. Refactoring includes rename, which obviously you shouldn't use to do any evil, though we have implemented undo. We have a set of quick fixes which appear in response to salt sea warnings and errors. You can find them under the bulb icon. So let's bring back public visibility and similarly making sure that we set the override specifier. These are small annoyances with function signatures, but we have more complicated quick fixes. For instance, if we have a contract that needs to implement an interface or multiple interfaces, we can leverage the add missing functions from interfaces quick fix, and this will do some of the heavy lifting for us. It is scanned through the inheritance hierarchy uh, of interfaces and base contracts and figured out what the smallest set of functions that needs to be stopped for SaltC to, to stop shouting at you. Oh. So once I had, oh no, if I push play, this is going to play again. Ah, good. They figured by it. I want to add three caveats to that video. Caveat number one. Uh, like any suitably advanced technology, it is indistinguishable from a rigged tech demo. Right? And what you just saw was a rigged tech demo. You didn't see all of the places where jump to definition doesn't work, or you were, you're aiming for completions. We didn't resolve the fault set of completions. Caveat number two, I want to just re-emphasize that the documentation against the function wasn't appearing on hovers. And there's a technical box to that that I want to come back to. Right? And three is the biggest caveat, which is there's key features in there, actually, like um, diagnostics and quick fixes that only work inside of a hard hat project. Right? And that's a problem that I want to come back to again. But let's take a look at the other extensions quickly. Solidity Y1 Blanco. This is the OG. It's been the workhorse of Solidity development for years um, with uh, over 800,000 downloads relative to ours. Uh, let's just say we know how Vim feels. It provides syntax highlighting, integrated formatting, um, it has navigation and diagnostics. Um, but the default structure assumes that you're organizing your contracts under source and lib. So setting it up for hard hat is, is, is difficult, um, but it's going to work better if you're doing Foundry or DAP tools or, 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 or Brownie. Um, uh, next, we have Truffle for VS Code. This leverages Solidity by one Blanco for the syntax highlighting, diagnostics, etc., but adds a layer of UI integrations into the Truffle tool suite, right? So that you can run, compile through um, the, the UI, through the task subsystem in VS Code, for example, right? Um, and that's great for onboarding if you're new to Truffle or you prefer the UI to the CLI, right? One other really cool feature is integration with the Truffle debugger. I just wanted to mention as well, this isn't from general development, but the diligence team at Consensus has a set or suite of uh, extensions that are security centric. So they're going to give you analysis and visualizations when you're doing a smart audit. Plenty of options for Solidity then. Lots of great programmers pushing the ecosystem forward. But I don't think any of us would claim that we're yet in the same league of editor support as other language ecosystems like .NET or Rust or TypeScript, right? So how do we move from where we are now to that best-in-class experience? And one of the answers is just uh, time and resources, right? But there are a few technical blockers. I'm going to spend the rest of this talk uh, digging into those. First off, feature fragmentation. So we have features which are siloed by editor and also siloed by development framework. The other is feature brittleness, right? Can you rely on a feature to always be there and to do the right thing? Um, for Fragmentation, clearly extensions we have built in VS Code. Um, a, maybe the lack of support in Vim uh, is why there isn't as many people using Vim, right? If they had those advanced features in Vim, they would be using them, right? So that's one form of fragmentation. The other form of fragmentation, though, is in developer framework, 
Not all of the features that were listed there work for all development frameworks. Right? If you're working on a Truffle code base, you're probably using Truffle for VS Code. And if you're in a hardhat code base, hopefully you'll use the Nomic extension. And if you're in Foundry, uh, you're likely using one Blanco's extension. Right? And that makes sense for some development-specific features. But there are core editor features which should just work across all of them. Right? You're going to want rename in Foundry just as much as you're going to want it in hardhat. But currently, it's siloed in hardhat. Right? How are we going to get around this, this? Sorry, there are multiple reasons for that. Um, one of the reasons is, is just Conway's law. So if you've got four teams working on a compiler, um, then you're going to end up with a four-phase compiler. The code structure matches the uh, communication structure of the teams. right? And the development teams that are uh, uh, writing editor support, it's easier for them to add it for their own development framework. It's easier for me to harangue the other hard hat devs or cajole them or convince them or go crying to the CTO to try and get it changed than it is for me to convince the entire ecosystem to just do what I say. Right? But there's an, another aspect that's uh, part of Solidity, right? which is that Solidity doesn't specify how import loading works, or oh, sorry, uh, or doesn't specify that part. It leaves it up to the development framework, right? So if you, so if we've got an import statement here pulling in other Solidity codes, Salt C uh, requires a custom loader to actually resolve that, and it has to be provided by the development framework. And if it's a relative path, the development framework is probably going to do that as relative to the, on the file system, right, from the current file. But if it's a direct import, then there's multiple different interpretations which make sense, right? In hard hat, we would interpret this as uh, look inside of node modules and then find open example and resolve the rest of the path, read the IRC20 solve file. And that makes sense, right? Hard hat leverages JS, including node modules. But that doesn't make sense for Foundry, right? It's going to uh, resolve this based on remappings in either the foundry.tomo or remappings.txt. Right? And that has profound implications for editor tooling. Right? So say you're on IRC20, this token here, and you want to do jump to definition. The editor can only resolve that if it understands this at open Zeppelin import line. Right? That implies the editor has to understand the import loading logic of the development framework that this file is being uh, dealt with under. OK, so how are we going to work around these fragmentations? And editors uh, and different editors and fragmentation across the development framework. I'm going to do it in two steps. First, we're going to use the language server, which is language server is a technology that came out of VS Code, but tries to deal with the fragmentation you get across editors. Right. So instead of each editor uh, implementing language features for each language, we gather up the language features under a daemon, and we have the editor boot that daemon up, ask which features it provides, turn those features on in its UI, and whenever the Whenever those are requested by the user, it delegates them off to the daemon. And the communication between the editor and the daemon is covered by a clearly specified protocol, the language server protocol. And that's what we're doing in uh, the Nomic extension today, right? There is a, a language server which is encoding all of the completions diagnostic servers um, that, we, that we provide today. And there's, that is embedded in VS Code, but there's nothing is, is stopping us from exposing that out so that other editors, say them, can take advantage of it. Right? But what about the uh, important or more difficult uh, form of fragmentation right, between developer frameworks? If you have a language server uh, in the Nomic extension already, why is it that I don't have uh, advanced completions in Foundry? Right? And the reason because that is because Currently, the language server is really a hard hat language server rather than a Solidity language server. We are uh, all through the code base encoding hard hat assumptions to deal with things like the import loading that we saw earlier. Right? Uh, and the reason that we've done that is we use bits of the hard hat code base, right? which allowed us to get up and running quickly. We can make hard hat dance. Right? And subtraction is hard. Right? But we are uh, looking now to refactor the language server to isolate out these hard hat particular points, the development framework uh, particular parts, behind an adapter interface. We'll have a hard hat adapter, but we'll also can then have uh, implementations for Foundry, Truffle, Brownie. Right? And in that way, we can add the feature once and have it available across the ecosystem. One other point I just wanted to mention, recent versions of Sol-C have a language server built in. Right, so why don't we leverage that? And we're big fans of language servers, so the more the merrier. 
But the Solve C language server is embedded in a particular version of Solve C, right? And hardtack code bases can have versions that are older than the ones that provides the uh, language server. And similarly, we have many complex code bases and hardtack code bases which have multiple Solve C versions, right? And we need the language features to just work across those versions. So, though, so that's why, right? But just to summarize, the Nomic extension has an in language server. And that we are making developer framework agnostic, and that we're going to make standalone so it can be used in other editors. And that's how we can build a feature once and leverage it across the ecosystem. Feature brittleness, right? This is about uh, quality. The editor just doing the right thing. And so when you um, do jump to definition, you can do jump to definition all of the places you expect, and actually goes to the right place. And the Nomic extension has blind spots. Right? There are lots of places where features don't quite work as we would like. And there are several areas that we need to work on this. Um, but I just wanted to focus down on one in particular today. Right? And that is that we are not giving the best experience when people are annoyingly trying to use the editor to make edits. Walk through, so you're bopping about inside of the you're bobbing about inside of the editor, you're doing navigations, you're exploring the code base, you jump back again, right? And then you start making an edit. And you remove a semicolon, right? Shame on you. Shame on you. But um, suddenly, jump to definition doesn't work, right? And why is that? So the video just showed you a change in the document, and that change doc gets passed to the language server, right? And the language server does a parse. Um, and it builds an abstract syntax tree, right? And that's a data structure which represents the syntactic elements in the, in the code. The code might represent a function, and then subnodes would represent substructures like the function name, the parameter list, the, um, uh, the function body. And note as well that the parse produces an abstract syntax tree, right? So some trivia is thrown away, stuff that isn't strictly necessary, like white space, like comments, right? Because they are not typically used in later phases by, for instance, the parser, right? And that's why um, when we do uh, hovers, we don't show the documentation. The abstract syntax tree is abstract because it's thrown those elements away. And because the ASD doesn't have it, we don't have it. So we can't provide it in a hover. We take the, the language server takes the AST, and it combines that AST with the ASTs of all the other code files, right? And then we do a further analysis stage. We overlay it. With type information, we also scan through the nodes and we find uh, definition nodes and usage nodes, right? So a definition node might be a function declaration and a usage node might be a function invocation, right? And we layer on top of the AST that extra information, these extra links, so that you can see which node is connected to which other node. And so I change so that when the user uh, requests a jump to definition, the language server receives that request, including the cursor position. It looks up the nodes underneath that particular, uh, underneath the cursor, and finds, say, a function invocation, right? And then looks up that pre-calculated link to find the definition node, and we return that location, right, in terms of its file, uh, line, column, actually both to start and the end. And VS Code then jumps to that location. Next, the user makes an edit and introduces a syntactic error. The change doc comes through, we do a parse, and it fails. Right. And why did the parse fail? Well, we, like other projects in the ecosystem, leverage a Solidity Parser right, for parsing. But Solidity Parser, is, it's a JS library, and it's designed to give binary answers to the question of, is this syntactically valid? If it's syntactically valid, we produce an AST. Otherwise, here's a list of errors. And that makes sense, right? Most use cases of a parser stop if there's a syntax error. You don't proceed on to compilation or uh, generation steps if there is a syntax error, right? Editors have, have other needs, right? In the editor's case, we want both the list of errors, but also the syntax tree, right? Or as much of the syntax tree as possible at the same time, right? And that's not what a standard parser is designed for. And the way that we get around this in other languages is by building specialist parsers that are more tolerant, right? And they're designed specifically for that editor use case. And that's what we are building now at Nomic 
uh, through our slang project. The, the slang parser, one of the components of that project, looks to leverage best practices from other languages, right? from, from Roslyn, from Rust, right? things like uh, red green trees. And the goal is to always produce and put always to produce a syntax tree, right? Even in the presence of errors. It's just that sometimes the syntax tree will be valid and other times it will not. But hopefully, Slang's error recovery will mean that a missing semicolon in one function doesn't mean we don't get the syntactic structures in all of the other functions, so that we can take advantage of those in editor features, right? One of the other advantages of, of building a parser specifically for the editor is that you can include that trivia that's normally missed out, the white space, right? the comments, so that we can show the comments in hovers, for instance. right? Or we can do advanced formatting, oh, sorry, uh, uh, refactorings. Right? right now, we're blocked in refactorings because developers probably wouldn't be too happy if, on doing a refactoring, we stripped out all of the comments in the file. Right? That's probably unacceptable. But with a parser designed for the purpose, we have that information, and we can make sure it's there. Okay, so what we're doing here is swapping out an excellent but general purpose component with a component specifically designed for the editor. And that's how we drive up feature quality. To summarize, if you're using Hardtap and you're using VS Code, we think you should give uh, Solidity Binomic a uh, go. And we think it represents an excellent set of features. And you just heard how we're driving up the quality of those features by building um, editor-specific components and swapping out the general components that we have. And we are looking to make those features available across other development frameworks, right? We want a credibly neutral language server, and we're doing the refactoring and putting in the work to, or putting in the work for subtraction to support that. We also want it to be a standalone language server, so we want to pull it out for being embedded in VS Code. It's going to need to do a, a, a small amount of cleanup. This is actually one of the easier things we need to do. Um, but hopefully, sometime soon, a uh, shadowy super coder will be able to hack away in Solidity to their heart's content. OK, so that's how we're going to improve the Solidity developer experience for everyone. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for John before you Oh, leave? sure. Are there any analysis tools that can benefit from this improved, um, more robust uh, a abstract syntax tree? Sorry. Yes, sorry. So the, so the question is, are there any other tools that can take advantage of this? And we would hope definitely, yes. The Slang parser, uh, we're building a component that can be used in dev tooling across the ecosystem, right? And it's going to give more detailed information and work across uh, different uh, Solidity versions, right? So it should be giving you rich information across versions. Other parts of the Solidity project also intend to add other components to provide even more information. So usage and definition would be the next one that we're, we're, we're looking to tackle. So yes, hopefully lots of analysis tools will be able to leverage these components. Hey, uh, thank you very much. This is awesome. Um, so two questions, real quick. Uh, Go for it. Uh, it wasn't clear to me, at least, if this Slang parser is being used right now by the extension. And the second question is, uh, is there any um, intention from you guys to support uh, cock.nbeam, which is like a, yep. Yep. So right now, we do not have the Slang parser. We're using the Solidity parser. Um, as, and we're looking to dog food the Slang parser within the VS Code extension. Um, I, I'm not giving out estimates, mainly because it's not up to me. But um, yes, we're hoping to pull in the slang parser in the near future. In terms of Vim COC, um, that's part of making the, the language server standalone. And Vim COC would be the first target for making it work with that. Um, and that's something that is within just the team's uh, remit. So hopefully, that should be in the near future. When the slang parser comes out, um, how do we like? Is, do we need to install it, or is it already built in? How how can we get access to it? When It'll it does be available. Come out? It's a separate library. Um, okay. I believe it's written in Rust, um, and we, but we will make it available uh, in Node and JavaScript as as well. John, thank you. Thank you.